right here with Team Fuma Lopez in a concrete jungle, MSG, New York City. <laughs> Undisputed, undefeated. They not ready. They, they not ready. They not ready. They not ready, yo. How you been, man? I've uh, been great. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight. You know, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long journey, you know, throughout the whole time. But but it's finally here. You know, we're only a couple days away. I'm here at the garden. We both here. Everybody's here right now. And I just feel the atmosphere. I feel the love. I feel the everything, you know. And it's like, that's the blessings that come with it. It's been a long time coming, but it's uh, it's finally here now. I was, you was in the New York Knicks game, man. They lost, but... You know, they were showing nah, you they, love. They got the dub. They got the I'm dub. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get the Knicks some love. They matter of the fact, dub. they got the dub. Matter. Of, I'm my fault. My fault. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm so used to the Knicks losing. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> so hey, they got a better. They they doing better this season. At least you know. At least that. Yeah, the Lakers stuck it up. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, Yo, so um, yeah, look, a lot of people been talking about this fight. They've been waiting a long time for this fight. Um, a lot of people been frustrated. You've been frustrated. The other camp been frustrated. So how you how you feel now that it's finally coming to fruition? And now it's not even gonna be in Miami. It's in New York City. So how you feel about that? Ah, I feel great. I feel <laughs> at home. You know what I'm saying? This is home to me. This is my second home, if you wanna call it that. You know, this is the mecca of boxing. This is MSG. It don't get better than this. It don't get bigger than this. I mean, the greats, everyone has touched in this. Everybody that has been a part of the MSG are legends, are goats, are golden. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm at the cusp of going to that. And it's all about staying focused. You know, yeah, we were frustrated at one point, but we changed that from a negative to a positive. You know, and that's what it's all about. It's about staying positive through it all, smile through the bullshit, and enjoy enjoy the life, man. Now, you you expressed that, you know, this year's been like up and down, roller coaster, emotional, um, spiritual, enlightenment, all that stuff. Um, so how do you, how, now that, wh where you at now mentally? Where you at right now with this roller coaster um, <laughs> ride? Where you at right now mentally? I'm at the top, man. Mentally, my mind has already reached that ladder of, of um, I'm up right now. I'll say, what planet am I on right now? Uh, probably Jupiter. Yo, planet. Yeah, no, Yo, yeah, planet. yeah, true, true. <laughs> but you know, it's all about just uh, expanding your mindset, you know, expanding the way that you think, the way you uh, want to express yourself to the people out there and what you want them to listen to and hear. Uh, yeah, you know, you go through a lot of trials and tribulations, but that's part of life. It's, it's to make us stronger, to build us, to become uh, ready, like to make it stronger to be ready for the next obstacles that come our way. Uh, that's part of growth, that's part of change, and I'm thankful for the goal to go through all that I had to go through just so I could get to that, to the end of the light of that tunnel. You know, it's all about striving for that. It's striving just to be a great example, a good example, and a good, uh, a good purpose of, of a child of God. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all are children of God, so it's all about what we do with it. You know, He gives us the blessing to be here today. And my blessing to him back is just making making sure I do right by him. That's what's up. Making, I'm doing humanitarian work, going to the juvenile detention, just like uh, Muhammad Ali did back in the days. That gave the inspiration to Mike Tyson when he was in juvenile detention. And probably somebody's going to be, the, the, the kids that you did visit, one of them might come out the next year from Lopez. So that's very inspiring of you. I only I asked you about the the mental state because, of course, when people look at boxers, they like to go to with the... You know they like to critique them so they're gonna go with the nakatani fight knowing that you had um your mind wasn't all there i believe so going into that fight so people looking at it are like since he had this roller coaster how is he gonna overcome this fight mentally not the physical part of things but the mental part of it well just check back your history and what happened after the nakatani fight i fought richard Comey, the former world uh he was the lightweight world champion the ibf lightweight world champion fought him at the garden and what happened there two rounds so it's like when things come like that, you see a better version of Tio Fimo. You see a much greater, and that's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. So for everybody criticizing me, continue doing it because you guys helped me to get to where I'm actually wanting to head to, what I see myself, the potential of becoming, you know, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. Well, I'm here trying to become the great, uh, the double greatest. Anything's possible with God. So I look at it like this, man. I'm just focused on that. And one fight at a time, one day at a time, that's how I live my life. And right now, the person in front of me, come Saturday night, George Campos is Jr. It's going to be live on The Zone, so get the app now. And for everybody, man, just tune in because this one is definitely going to be one to watch. I'm here. I'm here not for a one-hit wonder. I'm not no one-hit no wonder. No short seasons. Nah, ain't no short season over here. This is long term. This is my life. So when I go in there, I'm putting my life on the line. And for everybody out there, for your entertainment. 
also a lot of people uh, a lot of undisputed don't defend their titles once they get undisputed they move on to the next division but you actually defending your titles how you feel of, of, of defending your undisputed um titles oh, i feel great i feel honored you know because those are my babies you know they've been collecting dust for some time man and it's like <laughs> they they like yo champ what's up and i'm like hey shit, same here what's up yeah. <laughs> like i'm trying to make this happen so i can defend my babies you know those are my belts man and i'm always i'm gonna do what i can you know, it's for the people, man, and, and we all need that. So it's great to be the first one to defend my undisputed titles um, since a while, man. It's been almost, it's been a, it's been a while. Yeah, so Bud Crawford didn't, didn't defend it. Yeah, it's been um, like a decade, probably. So probably. since someone defended their undisputed titles, so I'm just like focused on that. You know, I'm focused on showing everyone that, that anything that you put in front of me, I will accomplish and conquer. Looking, not looking past Cambosi, looking through, through him. You said that thousands of times. And probably you're the first one to be like, yo, you, I'm looking through my opponent. I'm looking past my opponent. So looking through your opponent, what you see, you know, through the eyes and the skull and then looking through Cambo. So what you see right there? Ah, fear. <laughs> I see fear all the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, energy. I'm all about energy. All, all, what, what I did the whole time while I was, uh, while they were, like, postponing my fights and everything, for God knows why, um, I was meditating, take, taking the time out there and just building that energy energy man we all are energy so it's like i feel that you know a lot of people can know a lot of stuff but i feel a lot of stuff you know what i'm saying it's better to feel things than to know things you know what i'm saying because it's a big difference and when it comes to this fight man i already know man it's you're not gonna get away from this fight you here you made it here so you're not you're not running away from that you know and you better not walk out the fight you know this is this is our time man i just want to show everybody talk your shit be ready to get the consequences what's your what's your message for your fans Latin America, Latinos, Honduras, what's the yes. message for To everybody, man, uh, it's the takeover, man. We coming back, we on the rise and we on the cusp of everything again, you know, just let everybody know, you know, this is the year that we close it out, you know, and I appreciate everybody being patient. I know it's been a long time coming. I know you guys are excited to see me fight and so am I, um, but tune in and be excited for 2022, what it brings, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to fighting three times next year. You know, and uh, we just trying to get this guy out the way so that way I could give you guys some entertainment fights that you guys want. And to everybody, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for, for always pushing me to be great and greater than I am today. So if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for God, I, I couldn't do what I do. So for everybody, man, to Honduras, a todos, nuestro país, cinco estrellas, a todos los Latinos, Latino America, uh, muchas gracias por todo. Y siga adelante siempre. And, a lot of blessings to everybody. Much love. Yo, BK all the day. And we just going to take over, man. They ain't ready for this, man. They ain't ready for this energy, man. I don't know what these Australians are about, but that's some sucker shit. Woo! you New York City, man. Yeah. Tight, tighten up your Timbs, man. Exactly. You tighten up the Timbs. Yes. Feel me? Y'all already know the team. <laughs> Lopez, Mr. Moonshine, Adobo, El Sazón, El Borracho, El Pastor de Boxeo. Woo! Mama, well. Mama, well. <laughs>